Thank you, Daryl. Good morning again. Please stand if you are able and join me in our call to worship printed in your bulletin. When the disciples were certain that Jesus was dead, he stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Let us watch for the risen Christ this day. Easter people, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Let us pray. Almighty God, your power makes the lame walk and the dead, dead rise to new life. We give you thanks for the love poured into our world through Jesus Christ, who opened our minds to understand what you have made, who 
whose appearance among his followers brings peace, and who creates faith through touch and taste. Show us, Jesus, even now, through the mystery of your threefold presence, one God, abiding now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. The one who calls us to repent hears us, and trust that our Creator knows us through and through. Let us open our hearts to the healing of God's forgiveness. What love you have given us, O God, that we should follow our position. What love you have given us, O Christ, that we should share the same with you. Forgive us and ask that we bring us to your own children. When we do not recognize Hear the good news. Who is in a position to condemn? Only Christ, and Christ died for us. Christ rose for us. Christ reigns in power for us, and Christ prays for us. Anyone who is in Christ is a new creation. The old life is gone, a new life has begun. Know that you are forgiven, and be at peace.
as we prepare to hear God's scripture read and proclaimed, I'm grateful that you pause in silence and solitude to not only listen to God's still small voice, but to share your words in silence with God. So let us go to God in silence for a few moments. Dear Lord of the still, small voice, we pray that you will receive each and every word that has been spoken in silence to you this day with your continued grace and mercy. And now, Lord, we pray that you will bless the reading and listening and hearing of your scriptures and open these scriptures to our understanding in order that we may hear what you intend us to hear. Silence in us individually, collectively, any voice but your own, that we may hear your word to us today. For it is in Jesus' name we pray, the risen one. Amen. I first want to say thank you for the tremendous coordination of this service. It's very clear that hymns have been chosen and liturgy chosen to complement uh, today's suggested scripture readings. And I want to share with you that I'm uh, intentionally reading from what I call my pastoral Bible. This is uh, a Bible that um, I bought years ago, my first year of ordination in 1991, and I would carry it to make uh, hospital visits and home visits, and, and particularly as chaplain at Foothills to visits. So I intentionally am reading out of this Bible this morning in order to reinforce the good news of the pastoral news of our scriptures for this morning. First coming from 1 John 3, 1 to 7. The good news that we are God's children. See what love the Father has given us that we should be called children of God and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this. When he is revealed, we'll be like him. For we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves just as he is pure. Everyone who commits sin is guilty of the lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he was revealed to take away sin. <clears throat> and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him sins, and no one who sins has either seen him or know him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Everyone who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. And then these words of the continued good news of Luke 24. And I remind you as I read this, this is a continuation of the first day of Easter, the first day of the resurrection. First Easter morning, court, Jesus, of course, is risen from the dead. The tomb is empty. This remarkable appearance 
of the stranger on the road to Emmaus, to two of the disciples of Jesus, his appearance in Jerusalem, and finally his ascension into heaven, as we will continue to read. Our lesson for today is his second appearance in Jerusalem, first at table with his disciples when he blessed and broke the bread and gave it to them, and they recognized him and he vanished. Then, our lesson tells us, he stood among them this time, gave, and they gave him something to eat, some good broiled fish. So listen to the good news of the resurrection of Jesus Christ from Luke 24, beginning in verse 36. While they, his disciples, were talking about this, Jesus stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. And they were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is myself. Touch me and see. For a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy, while in their joy, they were disbelieving and still wondering. He said to them, have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. Then he said to them, these are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, And he said to them, this is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day. And that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations. And you are witnesses of these things. And see, I'm sending upon you what my father promised. So stay here in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I invite you to join me in imagining something. Imagine one Saturday morning, your doorbell rings suddenly. You might be doing your normal Saturday morning events and drinking your coffee or whatever. And you hear your doorbell ring. You head to the door and pull it open. And to your shock, you are blinded by glaring lights, video cameras, and a lady holding an oversized check made out to you with your name on the check for $10 million against all odds in the world. You have won a big sweepstakes or a big cash giveaway. Now what do you think your initial reaction might be? Usually, over the years as we've seen clips of all this, of the big winners, their mouths are wide open, their eyes are are wide open, they're dancing around and screaming, I can't believe it, I can't believe it, I've won $10 million. At a time like this, usually, there are two conflicting emotions that run through our systems. 
First, there's disbelief. Nobody ever wins these things, especially me. And the odds against winning are usually just off the charts. And then, that contrasting emotion is usually of sheer joy. Yes, I have won. It really did happen to me. My life has changed forever. Leonard Sweet, the now retired dean of the theological school at Drew University, tells us that these clips of these big sweepstake winners give us a picture of disbelieving joy of the disbelieving joy the disciples had as we have heard read this morning. Sweet says, sweepstake winners are probably our best current example of how people look and react when they disbelieve with joy. These winners come as close as you can to get to matching the mixed feelings of the disciples when they unexpectedly saw their risen Lord. They were terrified, they were shocked, and yet they were scattered, ecstatic with joy. Disbelieving and yet unable to deny that the risen Lord was standing in front of them, wanting something to eat. Then, after having some grilled fish, Jesus reminded them about a previous Bible study he had had with them where everything written about him must be fulfilled. He not only mentioned this past Bible study, but he also truly had a mind-opening Bible study. Luke tells us that then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And y'all, every Sunday, you offer a prayer that that will happen. It's called the prayer of illumination. Let's hope and pray God has opened our minds to understand the scriptures today. Jesus gave the power to his disciples in that conversation to open their minds to understand the scriptures. Not only that he was to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day. These disciples are witnesses to the actual fulfillment of that. They have seen with their own eyes the actual hands and feet and certainly the results of the crucifixion. Not only have they seen the tragic results of the crucifixion, but they have also seen the power of the resurrection. They have seen with their own eyes his bodily presence. Part of the joy they experienced in seizing the risen Christ may have come as the result of the comfort that they had from his bodily presence. The spiritual writer Madeline Lingle tells the story of her little daughter years ago when the daughter was very, very young and cried out in the night. Madeline went to her daughter and attempted to comfort her. Now, Being the spiritual writer, the theologian that she was, She tried to comfort her little girl with the truths of theological doctrine. She said, don't be afraid, dear. God will be with you. Then her daughter, in the words of only a little child can deliver, responded with her own understanding of that theological doctrine. I know that, mommy, God will be with me but I want somebody with some skin on. 
I want somebody with some skin. Jesus and the bodily resurrection came to his disciples with skin on. He shared with them his bodily presence, even eating fish in their presence, and opened their minds to understand the power of the scriptures. He helped them also to understand their purpose and the purpose of all followers of Jesus Christ, including you and me including this congregation for Jesus gave us our marching orders to proclaim in his name repentance and forgiveness of the sins. Then he told them, you are witnesses of these things. What We might pause and ask ourselves, what does he mean by describing his disciples as witnesses? What does that mean? He means that they not only have seen the truth of the prophecy of the scriptures, but also their fulfillment in his bodily resurrection. They not only have been witnesses to these world-changing events, but they have been changed by these events and especially his presence. They are experiencing the transformation of the power and presence of the risen Christ. They are changed forever. And the mission of the church has been changed forever. Jesus has been resurrected from the dead and the body. He not only has been resurrected, but so have his disciples. They have been resurrected and transformed from a bunch of deserters, disbelieving bunch of guys, fearful into the being witnesses of the great truth of the resurrection. Always keep in mind throughout the Gospels, most of the time the disciples never understand what Jesus is trying to tell them. Peter denies knowing him, and yet God transforms all of them in their weakness, in their woundedness, in their craziness to be gifts of the good news of the gospel. And as witnesses of the great truth of the gospel and of the resurrection, they are promised by Jesus they will be equipped to witness to the resurrection and proclaim repentance and forgiveness to the world. He promises them, I am sending upon you what my father promised, so stay here in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. And Then that power from on high comes, described in Acts on the day of Pentecost. And the power of the Holy Spirit comes upon the followers of the risen Christ to give birth to the church. And from that time on to now and every day of the future, the power of the Holy Spirit continues to be at work in the church, including here at Simpsonville Presbyterian Church. And Jesus said to his disciples on that first week, Easter, you are witnesses of these things. He says it also to each and every one of us gathered here today and to each and every one who will gather here and be part of this congregation from now until the end. You are witnesses of these things. We are witnesses of the transformation of God's disciples, even when we disbelieve with joy. I understand Nancy Blakely has preached here numerous times. 
retired, now retired Presbyterian minister of this Presbytery. And just this week, in preparing for this message, I read a story that she tells of a news account years ago of two widows of 9-11. Both these widows lost spouses in the tragedies and trauma of 9-11. And they received such great support in the midst of their tragedy, trauma, that they wanted to do something for others like they had received in their great time of need. And they began to pray and ponder how they could share how the gift of compassion and love had supported them in their great time of loss. And as they prayed and pondered this, this coincided with the long time war in Afghanistan. And they became aware of widows in Afghanistan whose husbands had been killed in war and all the chaos of Afghanistan. And you probably know of that culture there, that the loss of a husband is usually the primary source of any security and peace and protection. And they lost their husbands in the midst of this. Well, the two 9-11 widows created a foundation called Beyond the 11th, Beyond 9-11 to support Afghani widows. In doing so, they made personal visits to Afghanistan to meet the widows they were helping. And their efforts were witnesses of the transformation and hope of the power of the resurrection of Jesus Christ to defeat death, to defeat death in tyranny and defeat the death of 9-11, to defeat the death of those killed in Afghanistan in war, and to transform death into life and hope. Many of you, I know, have been witnesses of such hope because of the hope you have received at times of death and disease and distress. And in turn, you like these 9-11 widows have been a witness of hope to others. And in doing that, we are witnesses of the bodily resurrection of Jesus Christ and the power that he continues to grant to his disciples to those who follow Jesus Christ, to do so in the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit of the bodily resurrection of Jesus Christ. You and I are witnesses to these things. And let us be witnesses to these things so that others may witness the presence of the risen Christ and not only hear the good news of the repentance and the forgiveness of sins, but also to witness it in our lives and to witness it in their lives. Let us do so in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now, over 30 years ago, when I was a student at Union Seminary in Richmond, Virginia, I had the joy of going out in the countryside of Virginia and preaching in little country churches. And at that time, D. 
different Presbyterian churches were using a um, little bit different words in the Apostles' Creed. And we were taught, when you go to one of these little churches to preach, find out if, if they rise, if they are, uh, if Jesus descends to hell or not. All right? So, as we use the Apostles' Creed this morning, I'm pretty sure Jesus descends into hell. Um, and what that really means is he died the same death we all are going to die. And that's the kind of God I want to worship. The risen Christ. So let us now use, let us stand physically or in spirit, to use the words of the Apostles' Creed to state what it is we believe. And I'll remind you of the baptismal font up here that we believe the words of the Apostles' Creed was origi were originally used in the early church at the time of baptism for people to state what it is they believe. So may this be a reaffirmation of baptism or possibly a step to baptism in your life. Let us state what it is we believe. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered and punished by was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven sits on the right hand of God Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Church, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. Once again, one of the wonderful gifts of the church is to be in prayer. So let us go to God in prayer. Dear Lord of the past, the present, and the future, we praise you once again for your faithfulness. Your faithfulness each and every morning as the sun rises and as people of faith, we are reminded of your Son risen from the dead. And therefore, we are Easter people and people of hope. And in the face of the difficulties and challenges of life, we pray for your providential grace. And we pray for your peace, particularly within individual lives, within families, communities, and we earnestly pray for peace within our nation, for peace in Israel and Gaza and throughout the Middle East, peace in Ukraine and Russia, and peace across the world, oh God. For we have been witness of and we claim the power of the Prince of Peace. We continue to hold up to you the prayer concerns and joys that have been shared this morning and take these names and prayers with us to continue to pray throughout the week. We also thank you for the continued witness of this congregation, the leadership of this congregation, Mary Ann and Session and others and each and every one who is part of this congregation, for we do claim the power of the priesthood of all believers. And, O oh Lord, we continue to hold up to you the silent words that were shared with you, and we do so in the name of the risen Lord, the one who taught us to pray the Lord's Prayer, as we now pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name.
Friends, we have heard and witnessed to and proclaimed the good news of the gospel. Let us respond with gratitude, with praise and thanksgiving to all the good gifts from God and the offering of and our offering plate that's located at the back table of the sanctuary just inside the back double doors. And let us continue to offer our gifts, our God-given gifts, to the glory of God. Let us pray. Dear God, the giver of all that is good, we pause now to pray that you will empower through the risen Lord and the power of your Holy Spirit the, all the gifts that are offered in the life of this congregation to empower the financial gifts, the gifts of time and talent, and the gifts of compassion and prayer and care, that all these gifts may be witnesses of the risen Lord and his purposes in our individual lives and in the life of this congregation. For it's in Jesus' powerful name we pray. Amen.
think I've already offered the prayer of dedication. Therefore, let us sing our closing hymn. Friends, we have been witnesses of the power and presence of the risen Lord. We are called to continue to be witnesses of these things, both this day and forever. And now, may the God of hope fill all of you with joy and peace in believing, so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit, both this day and forever. And let all of God's people say, Amen.